Hi, welcome to the ZP Vlog and Podcast. So we do this um, vlog and podcast every um, Sunday at 8am London time. And today, without exception, we're um, obviously doing it. So what I'll do is I'll just jump in and sort of give some news for this week. We did have our company meeting a week ago. Um, and I um, we did put some images up on the internet. So I just want to kind of highlight them here that um, at the company meeting, you know, we did mostly discuss actually our sort of strategy um, in terms of a business and, you know, in our, our strategy is simply sensor to API. What sensor to API means to us is we're recording things, we're sending the data to the um, cloud, we're processing the data, and then we're allowing other people to access that data using um, what's called an API um, call upon our database. Um, some other news from ZP this week as well is that um, we are very interested um, in ZP, obviously, in sensing. And I suppose when you do sensing, that brings you really to analytical sciences. You know, so we've become sort of, you know, um, if you can sort of say, you know, sensing became an electroanalytical science. Um, electroanalytical science became analytical science. Analytical science became kind of um, data science. So we've actually put some videos out there this week um, really about digitizing um, different industries and different applications. And this is something that they're very much up to, um, if I could say that, in the battery space. But we're very interested in obviously measuring the kind of things like the health of, the, sorry, the state of health and the state of charge um, in batteries. And so we did put some notes out there this week about um, vanadium redox flow batteries, um, which is a really good fit for us because many of us have also have a background in chemistry as well so we do kind of like these um applications which also have a strong sort of chemistry um element to them as well um something else that we a note that we put out there this week as well is it was just really a note for ourselves that many people think that there's this really strong distinction between um sensors that are built on um field effects transistors and sensors that are made by electrochemical sort of technologies and they're really not so different. Um, it's really a mental difference that some people understand some types of sensors, other people understand other types of sensors. I think it's fair to say at both at ZP we both we understand both types of sensors. Why? Because it's our job. Um, so we do kind of sometimes re meet these sort of challenges where somebody says, "Well, can your equipment or do you understand field effect transistors?" And we're like, "Yes, we do." So we put some notes out there um, this week as well. Sort of it's trying to pull down the barriers between that these two technologies are really distinct from one another, though they're not. Um, what I do like about uh, field effect transistor-based sensors is uh, they promise the capability of being scaled or made through the electronics industry. I say they, they have the promise. It's not really happening at the moment, um, but they do hold the um, promise of scalability, if I can put it that way. Um, some other news from Zimmer and Peacock this week is actually quite a lot this week. Um, we did put some notes out there about manufacturing MIPS. So MIP is a molecular imprinted polymer. Um, you sort of polymerize something in the presence of another molecule, which they call the template. And you essentially kind of build a structure around this template, which you could kind of think of as an artificial kind of um, antibody. Um, and then you have to remove this template and you're left with this hole or this pore that's meant to be specific to the analyte with or the template molecule that you used. The only problem with um, MIPS and the um, subsequent molecular imprinted electrochemical sensors is how do you scale these things? So at ZP, we do actually have some robots, um, which is quite unique for the scaling of um, MIPS, these molecular imprinted um, polymers. Something else that we um, touched upon this week as well, we do have Julie. Julie is an ex a very extensive um, data management system. I mean, I mentioned earlier on about our sort of, you know, ZP has become this kind of data sciences company as much as a census company. And one of the biggest technologies that we have is our, um, is our Julie database, which is, as I say, is a data management system. And we just put a little note out there this week that actually it's really powerful for analyzing data in many ways so you know people will get a piece of electrochemical data they'll sort of eyeball it and they'll analyze it and they'll say oh that's that's my best point for signal 
but I really show a very, you know, it was a manual way I did it, but I showed a very good technique where actually we were um, playing, let's say, with this window of integration and we could interfere or we could um, affect a KPI, a key performance indicator, um, by changing the window um, of integration. So that was pretty powerful. Um, some other news, don't forget that every Thursday at 8 a.m. London time, we do do our ZP Developer Zone webinar. Um, we, um, we're going to do one on the 29th, but of course, uh, we also did one on the um, 22nd as well. And what we do really is, is um, answer questions that come in um, during the week. You know, so if I have a look at some of the um, questions that came in um, this week, um, somebody was asking whether the resistance of their carbon ink was okay, and I kind of said, yeah, it's fine. You may have to think about putting some silver conductive tracks in there. Somebody's asked about sodium sensors and wearables, so we did answer that. They were asking about biosensors for bioreactors, we answered that. We gave some quite nice details about how to do a polypyrrol coating, we did discuss that. We also discussed 96 well plate um, technology and also making a wearable wrist biosensor. So we definitely covered um, all those topics. Um, it's quite, yeah, we went fast this week because, um, you know, we, we really need to sort of do these things in 30 minutes, both. Uh, out of respect, really out of respect for the people who've asked the questions as well. We don't need to sort of, you know, everyone's time is very valuable these days. Um, and so we want to, you know, we go fairly quick. Um, something else that we did um, this week as well was we actually did a um, a live streaming of our FoodSense um, technology. So FoodSense really is a kind of flagship for us. It's, it's, it's a demonstration of everything that we do at ZP. You know, what I mean by that is um, you know, we're really good at reducing things that, oh, I just want to say hi to Ali. Hi, Ali. Nice to see you. Um, sorry, I didn't notice. Um, but FoodSense is a, um, how do I put this, is a um, system that sort of demonstrates our, our capability of reducing all of our um, or lab tests that were not originally done in the lab into actually a... Um, tests that were otherwise done in the lab into something that um, can be done as what's called point of care or point of need. So we did do a de um, we did do a webinar on FoodSense this week. Um, super happy with it. Um, we got good attendership. Um, Solron did a great um, demo and um, she did two live demos at, the, at, the, at there as well. So good um, demo by Solron and thank you for the attendees as well. Um, some other news from um, Zim and Peacock this week is because the demos went really well with FoodSense, we're going to do a, a, um, a free webinar every week, sorry, every month. So we've got one um, booked now for um, August on the 29th, and we also have one booked for June, I think it's on the, 20, um, on the 25th. Um, wow, a question that we get a lot is really about quality. There's really a quality issue um, around screen printed electrodes um, and the quality is really repeatability and people sort of have bad experiences with other vendors and then they reach out to us and ask us about our quality so I did we did do a quite a bit of webinar this week on inter and on intra um, screen printed electrodes um, or rather our repeatability of manufacturing so we really dived into it we talked about um, our low cost electrodes we use actually use our own products, which is a really important part of our manufacturing. We talked about our potential stats and we also talked about our Julie database and these kind of things all as a sum come together to make us really good at um, screen printed electrodes. We also had some student visits um, this week. So we were delighted to have um, some students from the University um, USN and they came in. I think they had a good time and, and we were delighted to um, welcome as I say, the students um, this week. Um, also, we do have quite a lot of collaborations and we have a PhD at the University of Birmingham. So they were kind enough to characterize some of our gold electrodes. Um, so we put the characterization data up onto um, our website. And it's kind of interesting as well because actually gold has become so expensive these days um, that we're actually even on the same page sort of said, look, if you really want a low cost option, go for carbon. So i um, happy to support people with gold, but the, the, the secret news is it has to be carbon these days. It's, 
you know, you have to change the chemistry or the electrochemistry in order to work with carbon. Gold is, le is not an option anymore. It's becoming s too super expensive. We also wanted to put congratulations to Matthias Sensors. They've been making um, further batches of their... Um, they use printed circuit boards to make electrodes, and they do a really good job. Um, so thanks to them, um, they've been putting out a new batch recently, and we wanted to just highlight... Um, that you know they're, they're doing this work something else as well that's a bit close to my heart i remember when i first went left university i i had done stats at uni and a few times so i was you know happy enough but i remember everyone talking about the cv the cv now being an electrochemist cv meant cyclovoltammetry to me but they actually meant the coefficient of variation um and so this week i suppose in honor of that and also because there is some confusion about RSD, relative standard deviation, and coefficient of variation. In the most basic f format, they mean the same thing. It just means take your standard deviation, divide it by your uh, mean or your average, and times it by 100, obviously, and get into percentage. So it tells you something about your precision. So if I've got four data points, and I take those four data points and I average them, obviously I have my average, and if I take those four data points and I calculate my standard deviation, I have my standard deviation. Now, if I divide my standard deviation by my, um, oh, that's interesting. Um, just one of the guys who's online at the moment is just discussing that he has problems with um, repeatability as well, um, which actually all comes back to it. So I'm going to jump back to this whole comment about repeatability um, of electrodes. So let me just sort of jump into it a little bit deeper here. So at ZP, um, for example, we will make sheets of electrodes and we will calculate the coefficient of variation. Um, and so on sheet um, two, we have something like a 4% coefficient of variation. On a sheet 26, we'll have something like a 6% uh, variation. So we do, um, we, we really want to keep our kind of variations, you know, we really want to keep that sort of 5%, you know, if not better, but, you know, we, you know, we do sort of move around a bit. Some of them could be three, some of them could be four, some of them could be six, um, some of them could be five. So we are aiming for this five. Now what we're also doing at ZP is we're looking at um, these means of our sheets, let's say, and making sure that from sheet to sheet to sheet we don't have too much variation. I think we're quite unique in this. I know I sort of say it a bit, but it's because um, we do try to encourage everyone onto the same screen printed electrodes so that means that our volumes are higher we do use these electrodes ourselves which means that you know we're the first ones to um, actually identify those problems we obviously do have um, potential stats that allow us to um, let's say do parallel testing um, you know and so you know we're, we're, we're sort of able to test at a numbers that allow us to be um, significant in terms of our um, statistics and lastly, and boringly, because I say it a lot, but we also have this Julie database, which really means that we're processing this data really fast relative to basically other companies. So they, you know, they're, they're sort of reluctant to do it because actually they, they can't process the data at the, at the right speed. Um, and anyway, all that said, um, I suppose it, it was linked to that because actually we use things like um, relative standard deviation to actually then monitor um our sort of performance or our repeatability and there we are we put up a note as well just to clarify what we mean by rsd um and i for me at the most basic um, term it also means cv as well coefficient of variation so thanks to ali thanks for the comments this week um and um we'll do this again next sunday 8 a.m london time we'll also do our zp vlog our zp developer zone on thursday and we also have the um, Scandinavian Census Summit. Let me just put that up. Um, I also want to make that. It's wrong computer. Scandinavian Census Summit. We do have the Scandinavian Census Summit, which will be on the 13th and 14th of September. We are holding a, um, a pre-workshop on this. So um, we do a really excellent, I would say, workshop on electrochemistry. Um, so we are... Um, definitely um, doing a workshop um, the couple of days beforehand um, but we are also uh, 
we're also having um yeah the um there's the there's the conference there's exhibition passes and then as i say there's the pre-conference workshop as well so i'll finish it there i want to say special thanks to ali this morning especially for the comments it's kind of interesting that yeah repeatability is really the big um issue out there i think we've got a real handle on it and it's not just we're able to roll this out into other companies as well so we do have some good workflows for that all right i want to say thank you i'll drink my coffee um and i wish you all a good week okay thanks very much